<laughs> you know there's there's gonna be somebody that's like, oh these these damn kids and their damn drum samples and their auto tune and their quantizing everything and the Beatles didn't use auto tune. Beatles didn't use drum samples. What are we even doing here? <laughs> What's up everyone, Cole Capperoon here. Thank you for stopping by for another video. Today we are talking about drum samples. Now, I'm sure that there's gonna be people that are like, you shouldn't put, be putting samples on your drums, you're just making it sound fake. Don't quantize an autotune, get off my lawn. I'm sure that there's people watching this. So, what I thought we'd do today is take a little bit of a different approach to this whole conversation and frame this in a way that hopefully everyone can get something out of, regardless of what style of music you work on or how much you enjoy a hard-hitting sample replaced drum kit. So today I'm gonna to take you through my process and show you how I create drum samples. And one of the things that I do is I actually create a new set of drum samples for every single session or for every song. Uh, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that and then we're gonna get into some mixed tips and show you how I blend those samples So that way the result is not a drum kit that sounds like it's been sampled necessarily Although you can have that if you'd like But you can make this as subtle as you'd like with the way that I mix it and the way that I blend these together uh, And so the end result is everything from just a punchier bigger more professional sounding drum kit all the way to like fully triggered if, if that's your thing. So I'm gonna show you my process, show you my techniques. You're gonna see everything. I'm gonna show you all my secrets. They're not secrets. No one, no one has any actual secrets. There's no secrets anymore. Huge shout out to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much, Sweetwater. I very much appreciate it. I've been buying all my gear from Sweetwater for many, many years. And the things that we're gonna talk about in this video, the software that I'm gonna use, the plugins that I'm gonna use, everything that you see in this video, there'll be links in the description below. You can get this stuff all from Sweetwater and uh, I highly recommend that you do so. Their staff is amazing, knowledgeable, helpful. They have everything, they have literally everything. So get down in the description below and use those links to pick up any musical gear you might ever need, including everything that you see in this video. And if you use those links in the description, I get a tiny bit of a commission and it really helps the channel out. Sweetwater's been a big part of helping me grow this channel and I very much appreciate them and I very much appreciate you guys using those links so I can dedicate more time to making content just like this. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I sample every single drum kit I've ever recorded. So 19 years, we're starting to push close to 20 years. I have drum samples of every Every drum kit I've ever recorded, which is, I, I, I should add them up. It's certainly hundreds and hundreds of drummers. We might, we might be pushing a thousand drummers at this point. There's kind of two ways to sample a drum kit. The first way is one shots. They just call it one shots. And what this means is that you are trying to get one perfect flawless hit of a snare drum, of a kick drum, of a tom, and, and that's, that's all you do. And so you kick. Uh... That's exactly how drums sound, eh, just like that. <laughs> but you wait until all the resonance in the room dissipates. Six hits on the kick, six hits on the snare, six hits on each of the toms, and then depending on the session and what the song is like sometimes, if there's a shuffle in there, I'll have them play just the shuffle on the snare. You know, just depending on what's happening, uh, I will make sure that I have whatever I need to cover all my bases for that song or for that group of songs that we're actually working on. And I do this in the same session that we're actually tracking drums. So we set the drum kit up. Usually I'll sample the kit after the first song if we're tracking more than one song because I want I don't want to give the drums too much opportunity to go out of tune or anything. So we set the drum kit up, we mic everything up, we tune everything up, we might play a song, and then we sample one shots on every on everything. Now this is my preferred way to do it. The other way to do it that is much more in depth is, is by multi-velocity or multi-hits or multi-triggers or whatever you want to call it. And basically what this is, hitting, say, the snare drum at as many different velocities as you can. So, Da, 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 da. And you would like build the velocity up with each hit every time waiting till the resonance in the room completely goes away. This gets way more complicated to integrate. And for me personally, I don't ever find it necessary 
because the way that I use samples is to beef up a drum kit, just to make it sound a little bigger, a little bit more powerful, uh, be able to EQ and compress things without bringing the cymbal bleed or the hi-hat bleed up in the mix, also to trigger reverb. So we're gonna go over all that. So I just do one shots. I sample every single drum kit, and then I only use those samples for that particular session. I want my music to every single song or every single artist or every single group of songs need to stand on their own and have their own unique thing. And so this is what led me to the point of, I, I need to sample each kit for each session and then use those samples for those songs and that's it, they get thrown away. I mean, I don't actually throw them away, I've kept all of them, but I only use them for that. And uh, this does a couple things. One, this makes it sound much, much more natural because I'm using the actual snare drum that was used from the session with the exact same everything as the trigger for the snare. So that's about enough of me rambling for right now. Let's jump into Pro Tools and let's check this out. Okay, so we're in Pro Tools right now and basically I've got a song pulled up. This is from the drum session. I've already comped these drums together. Uh, and so I'm just gonna play you a little bit of this here so you can kind of hear the raw drum sound. Uh, it's, it's pretty awesome, here we go. Okay, so that's just the raw drum sound. Now, what I do is I have the drummer always sample the kit. So you can see here we've got snare drums, we've got kick drums, we've got uh, toms and toms and yeah, we've got everything. So here's what the snare sounds like, the actual snare hits. Now, what you want, the first thing you want to do is you want to listen to each snare hit. I would normally have a drummer hit each drum six times. That's kind of my thing. Lester Estelle, who played these, is just, he's so unbelievably consistent. There's no reason for him to hit it that many times. So he just gives me a left hand and a right hand, and then we're good. So first we're going to pick out which drum we like better. Here we go. Now you can hear how this first one's a little bit sharper, has a little bit more attack, but it also has a little bit less bottom end. So totally your call up to taste. The snare drum in this song has plenty of bottom end. So we're gonna go with this one. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is we are gonna zoom way in here and we're gonna make sure you're on slip mode. This would be pretty much the same in every DAW. Uh, and we are going to cut very, very close to the beginning of this waveform. So we're gonna separate the region here and we're gonna pull this back just so there's no confusion. And then we're going to put a fade right up to the beginning of the waveform. Now what we're gonna do, let's blow this way up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the end of this snare drum. And so we're gonna highlight and we're gonna zoom out and we're gonna just listen. So about here, so let's separate that region and let's pull that back. Now let's highlight this. Okay, now the first thing that I wanna do, a snare drum doesn't need that much resonance in my personal opinion. You can do whatever you like with this. Here's how I do it. So that's the maximum resonance. I'm gonna pull this in just a little bit and then we're just gonna put a straight fade on it and let's hear what that sounds like. We're gonna start that fade earlier. Here we go. Okay, I like that, I'll keep that. So the next thing that I will do, um, basically when we get to mixing, I'm gonna touch on this again when I talk about how I mix these drums together. Because at this point, so you've got, you're just your sample, at this point you need to decide what your goal is with this, how you're gonna mix this. There's kind of two philosophies. Philosophy one is that you want just the raw drum track so that way you can mix like you'd mix a normal drum track. You don't wanna process this at all. And the other approach is to process this kinda of completely so that way it sounds like a finished snare drum uh, just the way that it sits. My approach lands somewhere in the middle. So what I will commonly do is I will, I will commonly like beef it up just a little bit and I will commonly um, EQ it just a little bit, maybe pass it through some hardware, uh, but 
all that to taste. So on this one, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pull open the fab filter and let's just take a listen. There's feels like there's a resonance about three or 400 Hertz that I maybe wanna take care of. Not too bad. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do, change that to natural phase and then we're gonna start playing around with this. Now, uh, uh, one trick that I do want to point out is the high end, the top end of your snap of your sample is largely one of the things that makes it sound more sampled. So, you know, really what I'd like this snare drum to sound like is something like this. That sounds great, but the problem is with that much high end b baked into the sample, when we get to our next steps, it's gonna be really easy to for this to sound ultra triggered, and that's not my goal for this particular instance. So we're gonna be much more subtle with these EQs. Okay, we're gonna go somewhere like there, um, and you can do whatever all you like with this. Um, let's just do a tiny, tiny touch of compression as well. And I'm just using uh, plugins. This Normally I would patch this out through hardware, but for the sake of this video. Um, so let's get, let's just get some, just a tiny bit of compression going. And let's get this knee a little harder. Maybe change this to some punch. Okay, that's feeling pretty good to me. So uh, again, you can process this however you would like. This is about the most processing I'm ever gonna do on a sample. Um, and then the next thing you have to decide is are you just going to use the snare drum? That's just the snare drum on its own, out of context. But of course I was processing it in context with the rest of the kit because when this sample goes in, it's gonna be in with the rest of the kit. Um, and so what I will commonly do is just give it just a little bit of, we're gonna go ahead and solo the overheads and we're gonna just bring them up just a little bit. So no overheads. Overheads. Okay, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, and so in this song for this case, and again, you get to experiment with this a lot because you're gonna do this for every song that you ever work on. Okay, so now we've highlighted this. We've got our crossfades uh, in the f on the beginning and on the end. So now we're gonna bounce this. Uh, and so you're just gonna highlight the whole thing. Whoop, not the whole track, just that whole one hit. We've got our fade in the front, we got our fade in the back, and we're gonna bounce this to our session folder. We're gonna just name it snare sample one and we want it mono summed because we want this to be a mono track because trigger does better with mono tracks than it does stereo tracks. I've had glitches in the past with doing it stereo. So uh, session folder and so let's bounce this. That's it, okay. So now the next thing that you're gonna do is we're gonna do spotlight here. Now I use slate trigger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in trigger to library and it should pre-populate. Yep, trigger two library, okay. Gonna double click this and that's gonna bring your library up and here's all the different folders in that library built into trigger. And then we're gonna click on this. You can see all the different snares that I have. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new folder in the snares folder. Uh, let's see here, new folder and we're going to name it for the sake of this. Now, normally I would name this like the song title, um, but you can name it whatever you want. So we're just gonna do snare sample one. And then we're gonna go over here to the song folder, bounced files in the song folder, uh, and there's our snare sample one. And we've got our new folder, snare sample one, 
And so all we're gonna do is just drag that right in there and now that sample is installed into Slate Trigger. So let's get rid of these and let me show you how I would mix this now. Okay, so now what I would do, now I've already, I've still got this EQ and compression on here because that we made that sample from the actual snare track. So we're just gonna bypass those for now. Uh, let's actually just get rid of them. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're going to take this snare top track and we're gonna duplicate it for that. It's a uh, shift option D in Pro Tools. Uh, and we're going to duplicate that snare. So now we have two snares that are identical. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and we're gonna put slate trigger on the duplicate. So slate trigger comes up and we're gonna hit browser, snares. And now here is our snare sample one that we just printed right there. And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna drag it down into the slot right there. And then let's take a look at our triggering, make sure it's working good. I usually pull this down quite a bit. Okay, so now we have our sample and our real snare drum going simultaneously. The where I get into mixing this, what makes it sound more authentic, less sample, less triggered, is when I'm mixing, and I would do this the same whether I'm using hardware or software, I'll create an aux. So we're gonna create a mono aux input, and we're gonna, and I do this in all caps. That's not how you spell snare. <laughs> we're gonna do snare, okay? And then, so this is our aux input, that's a snare drum. We're gonna put uh, the input of this to whatever bus you want. We'll use bus one for this case. And then you're gonna take both of these snare tops, the, the regular snare and the duplicate with the trigger on it. And if you hold down shift and option, while you make this selection, we're gonna select bus one. Okay, so now what you've got is you have uh, both the regular snare top and the sampled snare top going through this aux. and then you have individual control over how to blend these, okay? Uh, now the beauty of this is then I mix this as if I was gonna mix just the snare drum, except for most cases I'm only touching the aux. So when I go to EQ the snare drum here, let's go ahead and pull up another EQ. Okay, now, so I'm EQing both the trigger and the original snare together as one cohesive thing, and this really helps it tie together. So then the next thing we do is, uh, we're getting into some mixed tutorial stuff here, but then you start blending in the snare bottom. And I really like the uh, UA DBX 160 on snare bottom here. Uh, let's put that on. Okay, now uh, we have a trigger that we can really we can really rip on pretty hard to make really aggressive sounding if we choose to do that, um, and we can get there without as nearly as many artifacts coming from the rest of the drum kit. But you can't really tell. You listen to this. Tell me if you can tell that sample. Bring that way up. You can't tell that's sampled. I can't tell that that's sampled because we use the original drum and we're processing the original drum with the uh, sample and blending that snare bottom in, which is also part of the original sound. You can't tell, you just get a big, punchy, fat, powerful snare drum that is super transparent. It's one of my tricks. The other trick, let's get onto one more trick before we wrap this up is I will use the sample to trigger my reverb. So we're gonna create a new aux, a stereo aux. Uh, we're gonna create a new aux input, and we're gonna say snare verb. And we want a stereo one for this. My mouse isn't working. And then we are going to uh, put an insert on this. 
Let's go with some Valhalla Room. I'm not gonna dial this in, but I do wanna show you this. So we got some Valhalla Room there, and then we're gonna set the input of this, let's say bus 23 and 24, and then we're gonna use that send from the sample track, not from the original. And we're just gonna, let's just crank it. Let's see what it sounds like. Let's let's do a let's do something a little bit a little bit more uh, let's see here let's do a dark drum room Now the beauty about this is we're using the trigger to trigger the the reverb and so there's not all the hi hat and all the rest of the bleed from the drum kit in the uh, in the actual reverb. Now, even if you didn't want to use any snare samples at all, I would still create a sample like this for every single song, just so that way I can trigger my reverb in this way without any hi hat. So I would do this no matter what, no matter how aggressive of a sound I'm looking for or not. I always use a trigger uh, to trigger the reverb. And if you use the original snare drum from that session, it makes it much more authentic sounding reverb. If you like this sort of in-depth tutorial style content, there is a link in the description of this video to my Patreon page. In my Patreon, we are doing mixed breakdowns where you get to see every single detail of popular songs that I've mixed, uh, mixed tutorials, more in-depth stuff like this, music business advice, how to get more clients, best business practices, all of that kind of stuff. It's a really good resource for a lot of the content that's extremely in detailed and extremely educational that doesn't really work in here on YouTube. So, link in the description. Love to see you over on Patreon if you want more in-depth style tutorial content. That is how I make my drum samples and how I mix my drum samples, and I do it this way for pretty much every single song and have for some time now. I hope that this helped you. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon next to the subscribe tab, so you get notified when I drop sweet new videos just like this one. And uh, thank you guys so much for sticking around all the way to the end. As usual, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, this technical boring video, drop me a comment and let me know. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.